All right, so today is day 33, and it's a big day for us because we are leaving the fresh water and starting our journey on the ocean, setting our sails, and heading up the coast towards Nain. So we've moved all of our food that was left in the bear barrels over into our other dry bags. We are filling our bear barrels, maybe not all the way because they'd be super heavy, uh, with some fresh water. Are they liftable? Yeah. Nice. Weather seems pretty good today. If conditions are right and uh, we're able to get some distance under us, we're gonna try to get as far as we can today and then uh, just kind of feel it out as the day goes. Hopefully find a nice island somewhere. Noah's gonna be carrying the shotgun out on the deck today because we are in polar bear territory now, so uh, just can't be too safe. We're hoping for a good day on the water. We'll let the folks know our special recipe with the spray deck today. Oh, we're trying a new flavor of spray deck. Uh, we put ours on backwards. Um, it's a little loose. We're gonna make it work. Hope for no big swells today, or we're first sinking. <laughs> Pray for no big swells. I'll take it. All right, I'm gonna help Noah get out of here. So we are just getting to the very end of the Kogaluk River where we're gonna be entering the ocean slash Boise Bay on the ocean. Now it's time for the, the big, big water paddling that we'll be doing on this trip. And I think we've got some prime weather for it right now. Do you see many sea creatures out here? Sea monsters? Yeah. Yeah. But what are we collecting at the, at, at the coast? Some oysters? If you can find mussels, that'd be pretty cool. Mussels would be insane. Make a little, little wine marinade. Yeah, did you bring the wine? No, but if you ferment crowberries for long enough, we can make it out of that, can't we? Wine would be nice. Jeez, now that's a craving. I'd be really down for some charcuterie right now. Oh, craft beer has got to be like up there for me on like one thing I'm most cold craft beer. So we pulled over on a little bit of a rock point here just before we enter into the ocean, the Labrador Sea. And uh, we're just stretching our legs, having some chocolate bars to refuel. Say goodbye to the Kogaluk down there. You have been an incredible river. It's gonna be pretty sheltered once we get on the ocean. Yeah? Yeah. I don't see there being any issues. Four K crossing to get to Boise Bay. We pretty much follow this this channel up. Yeah, this, the terrain should be pretty crazy out there. Still pretty mountainous. Hopefully calm. So here, I figure it's high tide probably within the last hour, which would be super helpful for us to get across this. Four or five kilometers here. Water is pro probably going that way out towards the ocean, and we are also going that way. We just ride the tide. So it should be pretty quick. Four kilometers. We paddle five, six kilometers an hour. Yeah. Plus the tide, we'll probably get across in half an hour, forty-five minutes. Oh yeah, buddy. I also have a surplus of bars. 
Dun, dun, dun. What are you packing? You got a cliff, a nature valley, and a Snickers. Big day. Oh man, I just busted out a Snickers myself. I'm gonna have it with my coffee. Yeah. Great. Oh yeah. Whoa. I was thinking about it, but that might mess me up for, for a few hours from now. I have four bars, now I have three bars, but I don't know, I still feel like I, I should be conservative, just in case later is more work than I expected, and I'm like, oh man, I want a Mars bar. Then I'm like, well, why did I down my, my cliff bar with the Mars bar when we were on that nice island back, a couple hours back? So I think my long-term strategy is I'm not gonna eat my Mars bar right now. I think that's a good idea. So you know it's a good day when you have multiple bars stashed away in your life jacket. So, I've had a minimum of one chocolate bar, at least, sometimes two, per day, for the last 33 days. Back home, I think I'd feel pretty gross about that, but out here, I'm like proud of it. Feel amazing. Definitely lost weight. No idea how much. There's a diet for you. You get to eat at least a chocolate bar a day for 30 days straight, and you will still lose weight. All you gotta do is paddle from Menahik to Nain. So we are crossing to Voise Bay right now, and it is eerily calm. And there are storms just north of us. So we're hoping that we can get across this before we have any sort of bad weather. But it is that calm before the storm, which is pretty, pretty freaky. Considering a couple guys just took their dry pants off. Yeah, we just took our dry pants off because it was so sunny, but now uh, we're second guessing that. So we just crossed that large bay and we got here just before the rain started. So we hunkered down underneath this pine, waited for the storm to pass. And it looks like the majority of it's gone. So we're gonna head back out on the water and continue down shore. Yeah. So you know what they say about Labrador, if you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. And that's what we did and now it's beautiful. But we're not gonna hold our breath because it might get rainy again, as we've learned. You don't necessarily want to go from a nine to five like you would any other job back home. Uh, here it's totally weather dependent. If the weather is good early in the a.m., you travel early in the a.m., same goes at night. Oh, the tide's definitely going out. And it was definitely low tide at about... Or high tide. Sorry, it was definitely high tide at about 8 a.m. Yeah. So we figure it's going to be low tide at about 2 or 2.30. Part of the reason why we stopped, other than being hungry. Yeah. Is that if the tide's going out, the water's going that way, for sure. At about 2, it should be slack tide. And after about 2.30, it should be going this way. The Verde G is still going strong after 33 days. Mostly strong. A couple moldy pieces. 
end of it. Oh. Grease Forge on the south end of it. Okay. It's the closest piece of land in the North Pole. Mm -hmm. harvesting there some mussels for tonight plan something special for the boys yeah, steam mussels buddy I hope I don't grab a sea anemone by accident <laughs> think you got enough mussels for four hungry hungry dudes I don't know how many does it take to get you sick <laughs> <laughs> just one <laughs> We can portage up this and camp on that plateau up there. Yeah. And line down it in the morning. No problem. I can send the boat down that, no problem. Yeah. We can get down real quick. Could make it in the wind. We are ending the day here on the Labrador Sea. We must have gone over about 30 kilometers, most of the distance so far. Uh, a couple large lake crossings. I guess it's not a lake, I guess large bay crossings. And uh, yeah, the weather's been pretty good. Some rain clouds in the distance, a little pitter patter every once in a while. But overall, amazing conditions for ocean paddling. I couldn't imagine paddling this ocean in any different like circumstances. Like this is so perfect. Yeah. Overcast, it's not too hot, there's a breeze. Sometimes it's warm, sometimes it's cold, you just don't know what you're gonna get. But overall, wind has been on our side. So all the mussels have opened up and they're looking pretty tasty. So they've been on for about five minutes. I'm just gonna take them off and let them cool off a bit. You don't have to cook them long, they're just little guys. But I'm gonna keep the steam in there.
Mm, there's some sand in there, but that is a tasty friggin' muscle. I'm actually gonna put that back on for a bit. Any sauce for the mussels? Yeah. What are we letting here? Butter and Just some spices and onions. What's today? Day 34 or 33? 34. Holy smokes. So it is day 34 and we're on this nice, flat, mossy plateau. But the thing with this moss is that it's a little hard packed and I spent about five minutes trying to find the perfect moss to wipe my butt with, which is something that's been really easy over the last 33 days. But I just struggle. I had to walk really far down to find the perfect little patch. But uh, this is something new to us. Um, hard patches of moss. Hard for wiping your butt. Day 34, what can you do? It could be the fact that it's toaster's toilet paper and it's lasted as long as it's far superior as most toilet papers. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. It was not a good choice. Just then, it was not superior toilet paper. I don't know if you can really make out the bug fly cloud. Can't see it? I don't think so. A lot of black flies around here right now. There's so many. They've been going the exact same speed as us. So we are currently en route to Tabor Island, which is a historic Labradorite mine. It is no longer in use but we're hoping we can still find some Labradorite there and explore an old mine site. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of human activity out here, so that'll be our first sort of, kind of like taste of uh, the use of the, of the natural resources out here, which is a big thing actually. Labrador is known for its mining. Yeah, there's a lot of minerals and uh, different things that people have been taking out of the, out of the rock here, out of the ore. And it's, uh, it compromises the, the raw wilderness out here, but we haven't seen much activity, so that's pretty cool to see. Well, this will be our first, Tabor Island. So the conditions got really bad really quickly, 
the wind picked up, started raining, and we got really cold. It's about seven or eight degrees right now. We decided not to go to the island just because of how brutal it is out. Uh, we went to shore, got a fire going. We're in, the, we're in a sheltered area over there. We're probably gonna get some soup in us and try to warm up a bit and, let, and hopefully let this storm pass. Our next move is gonna be a two kilometer crossing, which right now would be right into headwinds. So we really don't wanna do that if we don't have to. So we're just gonna see how this weather is and move accordingly. My feet were actually numb. Frozen solid. So the boys are back on the water again. After having a little bit of lunch and laying low while the winds were howling. We've got some beautiful landscape here that we're paddling in the meantime and uh, we're enjoying every last minute of it. So we're just pulling up to what we think might be our last campsite. We're about three kilometers out from Nain. Is this home tonight, boys? I'm gonna go with yes. Home yep. sweet home. So we are currently on our last night out here and there's a high mountain behind our campsite and I was like, I wanna go climb that. So I came up here with Chris and the view does not disappoint. survive this, you can survive pretty much anything your work throws at you. Well, if you can like plan it all, yeah, all really the time point. that goes in ahead of time, and then go out and execute it and like do the whole thing. Why don't we just work. throw a bucket of water in that nice pair of underwear that you're wearing right there, <laughs> fill it with sand, and then I'm going to whack you with alder bushes <laughs> and fill you in a room full of bugs and you have to do that for 35 days. Put that in your analogy and smoke it. <laughs> exactly. Oh man, it's been a wild ride. Chris, what is this? So, this is... A day 35 treat. A day 35 treat, right. When we have excess food, 
Just you make fun things, yeah. You, you start uh, start wondering what you can do. And so what I've got here is some peanut butter sourdough, and there's a Snickers bar and some jam inside. We're gonna see if this works. It may not work, but like everything else on this trip, we're just gonna send it. Let's see what happens. I think the puppy's about ready to come out. Oh my god. <laughs> Snickers bar in there is jam. This was a, uh, this was a hard trip, but at the same time, very rewarding. It is bittersweet, 100% bittersweet. You're out here for so long. You get into a rhythm, I'm lost for words. It's it's hard to think it's coming to an end. Like this seems like this is life. All these trips, all these endings are bittersweet. You, you have a life to get back to, but at the same time, this has been your life for 35 days and you really don't want to leave it. It's simpler out here and it's certainly healing for me and I think everyone else on the team. Everyone got something that they wanted out of it, Got found what they were looking for. Just going back to like all the planning that went into this trip, speculations on what it might be like, how difficult it was going to be, how bad the bugs were going to be. These all became really real things over the course of the 35 days and we had some really, 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 really difficult days that pushed us in ways that like I don't think any of us could have pictured coming into this. I think every day there was a challenge that we've never faced before on this trip. It was constant mental and physical stimulation constantly having to be present all the time because if you didn't you could slip twist your ankle break a leg swing the boat a lot of different things that could go wrong the scenery got more and more spectacular as we went and i think we earned it through all the hard work that we went through i highly recommend several of these portages are just not to be missed <laughs> you, you you must do it i'd still do it all over again if i had 35 days of food in maine i'd go for another 35 you get to do this and like work hard every day. But you see areas that blow your mind, like totally blow your mind. Like we are in the mountains in Northern Labrador on the Labrador Sea, eating like kings, living like kings, cast a line, fishing like kings. It, it's, it's a life of total freedom out here. It really is. And I'm enormously proud of our team. We have a very, very good team for this. We kept really good attitudes. We we're very open and honest with each other the whole time. The perfect team to, to complete this expedition. We all worked really well together. You know, coming to the end, smiles on our faces. We made it through all the difficult times. I've said multiple times throughout the trip that I'm not sure that I know a whole lot of other people who'd be able to keep up and be able to deal with the rain, the bugs, the hard work. And it could have been a very different trip without that. It's all going to set us all up to uh, go back to society with uh, good, strong minds to take on any of the crazy challenges that are about to come our way. We've set ourselves up very, very well for the future. Anytime life gets hard back home, I'll just look back on a couple of these portages and uh, things won't seem so bad anymore. 10 out of 10 trip. We'll do it again. 100%. This is a true experience. I will take it with me for the rest of my life, 100%. Trip of a lifetime. Trip of a lifetime.
come here anytime. The garden is neglected, but the door is open. You can come. Turn the light on, sit with me. We'll no longer live in misery. There's room to hold your burden. My loving is for free. You can call me. Boys!